Reality slowly dwells in front of my face, a similar way to how a way a sunset would cast a red glow on the inside of your eyelids. Every day waking up becomes harder and harder. Sometimes I can't even understand if this is a normal thing or if I'm just weak. I never was a morning person. Slowly, each of my five senses come back to me. I immediately remember why I am or why I'm here. Usually when I wake up in a new or unfamiliar place, I'm struck with a bit of confusion before realizing where I am. It's different this time though. This isn't like waking up at another person's house after spending the night with them. This is different because of events that led to a haunt of my dreams. I never was a I never was going to wake up to this. Images of Reno's body slumped onto the floor with solar's eyes invade my mind by trying not to think about any of that yet as I'm not fully awake. I swear my eyes open open wider and wipe the feeling of dry tears from my face. The stone bench that I'm lying on that I'm lying down on is cold and smooth. Painfully I sit up and look around. What I assumed to be a sack that I was lying on lying my head on was actually a pillow made from straw and ragged cloth. There's a large tarp bundled up at the end of the fence, which I guess is supposed to be a blanket. It wasn't too cold last night, but I wish I had known that it was there. The cell wouldn't be too bad if the bed was a giant slab of rock. I'm better off sleeping on the floor. The only window is a small hole busted into the wall that's barred off. On the other side is a cell door that's locked with heavy chains. Along with that, the straw laid all over the floor and a few puddles of water. The seconds that I wore for a short time last night are laying there in a pile of straw. That's where they must have fallen after they all took them off of me. I get up from my position, my sitting position, and stand, stretching, stretching out my legs and arms. My clothes feel dust and any skin I have exposed feels dry and dirty. My hair feels messy and I shake my head letting it straighten itself before haphazardly tying back again. I don't really care about it looking nice anymore. I just I would just rather not have any hair in my eyes. I cut it but I have a feeling like I have a feeling Leon likes it too much. Leon. He said he would come back for me, but he didn't say when. Now that I think about it, was it why was it why hasn't anything happened yet? Since someone have come down to see me now with a bad intentions and sit back down on a slab of stone. My mind seems to be all over the place. I can't decide what to think about. I try to distract myself with other issues, but my thoughts always run back to the worst place. Reno is dead. They all think I did it. Except Leo, of course. I'm honestly surprised he doesn't think it's me, though. My body was freshly killed, and I was the one. The only one there. Before I could function better under stress. I can't believe this. If I wanted to kill Raynor, I probably would have, would have planned it so I'm not standing there like an idiot when it happens. Shaq really took me over there, and I also got another one of those sudden headaches. If I get out of this, I need to get those checked out. Whatever they are caused by, it can't be good. Kept my feet on the ground, and for the minute I know it's a chair that's been thrown against the wall. Its pieces are scattered all over the floor and look old and watered. Who could have killed him? Several people come to mind, but when I think about it, I don't know what any of them are capable of. Nobody reasonable really comes to mind. There's one thing that I'm, that I'm certain of, though. I was framed. Someone has it. Alpha me, I don't know who. I can sit here and rack my brain for hours, but I soon hear footsteps echoing down the damp hall. I don't get up from my seat until I really start to listen to the footsteps. They're extremely familiar. I jump up and run to the cell door. The you know? Get closer and soon I can see him down the bend of the hall. Richter. He approaches the door to the cell. There's a look of worry on his face, I can tell. He's been having a rough day. He probably has it worse than I do. 
and limply reaches my hand through one of the bars. He gets on his knees and takes it in his palm. I'm sorry, I should have come down sooner. I wasn't able to, though. Why not? His sad and tired eyes look up at mine, and I can see the stress. The entire kingdom is in sandals. Rumors are already beginning to spread throughout town. Everyone thinks that you killed Raynor. It's only a matter of time before this spreads throughout the rest of the north. I figured that would happen. Has anything worse happened? No, but the worst is yet to come. Everyone is scared, confused, and furious. I and several others were up half the night with Liz trying to wrap our heads around it. Others? Yes, anyone who was a witness and several other officials, the prince, joined us halfway through. How's he taking it? Not well. The bell started ringing and he locked himself in his room and to find it out. He didn't even want to see the body, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to see it either if I were him. One of the guards told me that he could hear sobbing and things being thrown around the room. Oh God. He probably thinks I did it. I wouldn't blame him, but I, but I really don't need more reasons for him to hate me right now. He joined us about an hour later. Not before kicking our not before kicking over your chair, of course. I can't I can't imagine that. Well he can honest, he can honestly be forgiven for losing his temper. Agreed. He had enough stability to contribute to our little debate last night, however. What has been discussed so far? He sits down in front of the of the cell chair and leans his head back against the wall. Do the same finding a nice pile of straw to sit down on. We mostly tried to figure out what we were going to do next. Laying our king to rest was one of the topics. That should be taken care of soon. I still can't believe he's dead. Yeah, can I? He wanted to be buried next to his wife. Behind the gardens? Yeah. How do you, how do you know where else he's buried? I was taking a walk through the gardens after we visited the village when it happened upon the grave. Reynolds was there and we talked for a bit. He came back to my room drunk that night. You came back to my room drunk that night, so I didn't get to tell you. Yeah. He was paying his respects and I caught him in a bit of a, of a vulnerable moment. After that, we, we just talked for a bit. He went there every month. Right now, they're already making the arrangements to make to have him buried there. The biggest topic was what this means. Some see this as an act of war, but I doubt that. I feel there's something far more sinister at play. I feel the same way. Given that stains of ambassadors was proposed by the kingdom of Aaron, Prince Adrius thinks that you were sent to cause chaos and weaken liar. That's ridiculous. Aaron would never dream of starting conflict between the kingdoms. Why would they want to start a war with Leo and Andres? That's not what they're thinking. A majority of people see this as, a, as an attack on life from both kingdoms. What? They have reasons to suspect that Dries is a part of this plot. The King of Liar has been becoming more and more isolated over the years. Trade has been slowing down and, there was, and, they, have, and they have suspicions that Ella and Dries are trying to seize control to benefit themselves. At least that's what I heard. I'm not a politician. It doesn't make any sense. Seize control. An improving relations between the kingdoms is a desirable outcome simply due to the fact that all of the kingdoms would benefit equally. Start a conflict, let alone a full uh, war, would be detrimental to the entirety of Tigran. No, I don't think that's what's happening. Neither do I. It just doesn't make any sense. Either way, even though Lord Kadads was the point of minister of foreign relations, Prince Adrian considers him a political hostage. Nothing too serious has been decided yet, considering Dries is only under suspicion of collusion. I see you haven't been scheming with Kadans. I know. Trust me, Winter, I believe you. I can't help but remember the conversation that Kadans and I had the other day. 
They fear that lie is falling out of touch with the rest of the kingdoms. So it's true. The, king, the kingdoms do fear that lie is falling out of touch. Even some of the citizens of Lyra feel this way. But he said his goal was to bring stability. So he couldn't have a, so he couldn't have a hand in this. Could he? I don't remember seeing him before I left the party last night. Thankfully, Liz somewhat agrees with me. Really? Yes, she also believes that there's something far more complex going on here. The only bad part is she's still conflicted of whether she thinks you're the one who did it or not. That makes sense. She really, she doesn't really know me. Anything she does know will definitely be confusing. I tried to convince all of them that you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That you were framed. What did they think of that? Liz seemed to consider it a possibility. Was Adrian is currently blinded by hatred, but in the near future I can see him considering it as well. I doubt that. It's nice to hear I'm not seen as completely guilty yet. Each moment we talk, each moment we continue to talk about this and everything I have learned was happening, I get more and more stressed. That's another thing. He sits up at bed and leans towards the cell door. We have a lot more information considering the scene of the murder. That's what I've been doing most of the time. Was there anything that could prove my innocence? Nothing yet, but there has been some very helpful insight. Like what? Well, first there's the body. He was stabbed twice in the stomach, once in the chest, and then most likely had his throat slit to finish the job. Reno was most likely cut off guard. His antlers tore through the drapes after getting caught in a struggle. We found flakes of gold st stuck on the cloth next to the whips. They were from the from the antler that he decorated from the ball. I feel my insides twist around a bit as I recall the image of the room. Is this interesting? But are there any important revelations? Yes, there is. The guards confirmed to us the people who had been in the room around the time before his death. Who else was there? The guards posted outside the staircase that leads up to the tower to this room confirmed that four people had been in there around that time. One of the guards beyond. Local Dodds, you, and of course right now. We're beyond going in and out within the hour. I knew it. What? Kadaz wasn't at the party when we left, was he? I don't remember seeing him. I think he and Raynor must have slipped out early. Maybe to take care of something similar to what he had in mind with me. That's most likely what happened. We questioned him a little last night. He said he was handling some important business with Raynor. Was the questioning hasn't begun yet, but maybe he knows what happened. Or maybe he leans for an interest. What? Maybe he had a hand in it. His eyes gleam with suck at first, but I see his thoughts and, and wants as he considers the possibility as if he's already done done it before. Even I have to admit, it's not something I would want to, to believe, but given the things he said in the past, is not far off. He alluded to events going in in a desirable direction after the winter solstice. They all speak so. It's not impossible. His eyes gleamed with saga at first, but I see. <sighs> his eyes gleamed with saga at first, but I see his thoughts and wants as he considers the possibility as if he's already done it before. His eyes gleam with saga at first, but I see his thoughts and watch this. He considers the possibility as if he's done it, he's already done it before. Even I have to admit, it's not something 
Oh, I want to believe, but given the things he said in the past is not far off. He alluded to events going in an in undesirable direction after the winter solstice. It all speaks up. It's not impossible. Bjorn is currently giving his full report to Liz, so we'll find out soon, I guess. But yes, it's completely impossible for him to have done it. Do you think he did it? Like we all said, it's possible, but I don't want to believe it. Bjorn could have done it too. Are you sure no one else was in there that night? Positive. Not only do, do we have Bjorn's brief report, but several canines, including myself, um, sniffed around the room. Oh yeah, that would be helpful. I forgot you could do that. It's funny to imagine Leon with his nose pressed to the ground, sniffing like a bloodhound. I thought that's how he did it, though. Yes. We only picked up the set of four people. Those are the people who were noted. Damn. There goes my hopes of, of it being someone else. There's a long silence being... There's a long silence before I finally answered this question from before. You asked if I think it's him. The thing is, I don't want it to be. But I definitely could... But it could, definitely could be. I agree. But I thought you didn't trust him. Or at the very least, didn't like him. He slumps down lower in his sitting position. I didn't trust him because I saw him as a man with a motive. Someone who wanted to climb the ranks. But I never would have imagined he would do something like this. He pushes a part of his muzzle between his eyes and runs a paw over his head. I too want to believe that it is it that it wasn't him. But only because it would mean Dweez had nothing to do with this. He lowers his paw and looks at the floor. That would, that would leave beyond. If it was him, that would mean it's not a form of attack, which would make this much more complicated. But I also don't think it could be him. He's always been a beast, but his devotion to his kingdom is unchallenged. I guess that makes sense. Still, it has to be one of them. Unless, what is it? Aegis. Well, if he, it's not out of the question, but it's extremely improbable, especially with the evidence we have so far. What if it was patricide? What? What are you saying? You know what patricide is, right? Of course I know what patricide is. You think Aegis killed his dad? I swear, this soda. I swear my sodas. It's not an impossibility. He wasn't in the room at the time, though. I know. He's out in the village last night. I saw him by the fountain. It all thinks for a moment. That's why the exit to the tunnel was unlocked. But still, you said it yourself. He wasn't even there. You don't have to be in the same room as someone to have killed them. To have them killed. Even so, we don't know if he was out there the whole night. What motive will he have? says this in a hushed voice, annoyance in his voice. Not everyone needs a motor, but it is as easy to figure out. With her eye, he gets himself off and thinks for a moment. Don't you think you're being a bit biased? No. I mean, we have to consider all possibilities. He looks down on the ground and wrinkles, at, and wrinkles his snout. I understand what you're saying, and I know you also don't like him. I know he doesn't like you too. Hell, you know, I'm not particularly fond of him. Lately, they may have been a bit distant or sort with his, with his other due to stress, but you've only been here a month. You haven't seen their full relationship. He loved his father. His father loved him. He bites his lip a bit, but continues. Last night, he wasn't raised. He was going through so many, so many emotions that they all felt genuine. You know how I'm a good judge on these things. I know I just thought I would throw I would throw it out there. I just had this feeling that it might be true. Why? I don't know for sure. He's been saying things to me recently. I have the feeling that he uh, that he has it out for me. He closed his lip in response to this. Not too long ago the gods gave me this advice. 
to trust my own judgment and re rely on what I know. To put trust in other people, but never as much as I trust myself. God wants a power through his fur, listening intently. I could just feel it in my gut that he has something to do with this. His paws bust up against his knees as he considers this. I don't know, Victor. Maybe you're white, but we should stop throwing around suspects. By that logic, we, we could suspect a damn servant that saw me half naked last night. Maybe he killed the king and went to go and find you. He exhales and gathers himself. But that doesn't mean he was the one who did it. We have to focus on the solid suspects that we have now. That's our best chance at proving your innocence. Suddenly, I saw pain shoot through my body, straight up to my head. Should we be considering all of our options? My life depends on this. I saw this at him, the ceiling pain taking over. This upsets him, and once the pain is gone, I instantly regret it. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to yell at you, I just. It's fine, I understand. I know that this must be stressful for you, but it's more than that. I'm just tired of talking about this. I just lay back on the floor and stare at the ceiling. Something's wrong with me. Like what? I'm not sure. Maybe it's these head maybe it's these headaches I've been having, but it's something else too. I feel like things are going so fast. That, like I'm on carrots going downhill, there's no way to stop it. I pause to collect my thoughts knowing I'm about to go on a very large rant. I've always tried to keep a level head. I was trying to become a master of my emotions, but sometimes I slip. Situations become too stressful and nothing prepares you for what happened last night. I froze. It's been happening all the time. I get stressed out and I make impulsive decisions and do stupid things. I want my hands through my hair and sweat my eyes. The pain still thought me in my head. Yo, I'm just... I'm so scared. He settles on the ground a bit and then leans forward. I saw him look on his face. I know how you feel, Winter. Believe me, I do. Sometimes we try to do our best to be prepared for anything. He looks down at his paw, opening and closing the fingers. But fear gets the better of us. Sometimes it can control us and influence our actions. He looks out a window to our left with a conflicted expression on his face. Winter, do you know the reason why I blame myself for our queen's death? Alright, why is he bringing this up? It's because you could have stopped it, right? Yes. He steals off in the distance. He steals off into space for a moment before continuing. When I had my eye cut, I couldn't move. Blood was pouring into my eye and eye. I thought it was to happen. Fear took over and I froze up. He was his part over his eye. My officer tried to save me and get me up, but I lost my footing. I wasn't in the moment. Everything happened so fast I was scared. These words echoed down the corridor. He looks up at me. They haunted me for a long time, Victor. I even approached Raynor about a few years ago because of the pain. I asked him how could I have been brave in that situation. He gave me some advice. He said you can't be brave unless you are afraid. Along with otherwise, you're just reckless. That's besides the point. Gets a slight smile. He's right. You have to stay brave. Fear can help with that. With that, he ends the speech. He gets to understand what you're saying. Aimlessly fiddle with the ring on my fingers, I take it all in. I need to work on that. It's pretty good advice. It's full of good advice. Lyle says this with a sense of pride. You really admired him, didn't you? It was more than just your dedication to night. I did. And since I started living here, he was like my second father. I was practically raised by him in my teen years. Please tell me you've had time to grieve. Not really. I had to focus on what's going on now. It's what we. It's what he would want me to do. He would be very proud of you, Leo. He gives a slight smile. I hope so. And I'm gonna make him even more proud. I'm going to do everything in my power to get you out of here, love. We know I may be dead, but I'm going to continue to follow through the orders he gave me. I will assist you in any way I can. He sends a sticks at par through the bars. 
I get up and take it in my own hand. I love you. I love you, y'all. I love you too, Winter. I just hope we're doing the right thing. You know, by being together. What do you mean? Well, it's just that I love you, Winter. Begin, but you said everything was moving too fast. And if you want to slow down, we can. Put my hand over his paw, feeling the pants beneath the glove and wetting my fingers along this. Now, I wouldn't say this is from my experience, but I know one thing about this world. Love happens in all kinds of ways. Sometimes it's slow, other times it's fast. Sometimes between people who are similar, sometimes between people who are very, very different. I say this as I run my hand around his cheek. You're very different from me. It's happening very fast. It's, and it happened at a very chaotic time in our lives, but this is the only fast thing in my life I this is the only fast thing in my life that I'm enjoying. You're my light in the dark. He leans forward, pressing his snout through the, the bars and gives me a kiss on the forehead. You make me so happy, Winter. That's how I come down here to visit you. I'm going to see about unlocking this door. Maybe I'll even get you better living arrangements, but I don't know if I have control over that. I definitely put you in one of the better cells, though. I appreciate everything you've done so far. It gives a slight, bashful smile. Speaking of, I should probably be going. I have a lot to do, and I can't be gone for long. Oh, yes, I'm sure our new king is just itching to order you around. I say this rolling my eyes. Actually, he's still the prince. Really? But he's an heir. He hasn't been crowned yet. Until then, as the king's head advisor, this is acting queen. Oh, so that's why she's been handling everything? Yes. This whole deal has put a heavy burden on her shoulders. It's even worse considering she just got back. She's handling it well, though. Responsibility is one of her strengths. He was a finger on one of the metal bars collecting dust on the tip of his glove before rubbing it off. Speak of them. Others might come down to talk to you, ask questions and whatnot. I know you're smart, so play the situation between your strengths. Okay, I'll try. I won't ever let anyone hurt you. He takes my hand in his lost paws and leg and leans closer to the bars looking into my eyes. Not even the prince? Not even the prince. I'll tell him, listen, you little wretch, he's mine. There's a moment of blissful silence as we just enjoy each other's presence before he has to leave. His forehead is pressed to mine and I feel warmth. It's like whenever he's around, nothing else matters. He pulls away, still holding my hand. I'll be back, love. I always will. He steps away slowly, still trying to hold my hand. My fingertips slide off of his gloved paw and he begins to walk away. I love you, Leo. There's a pause I hear him turn around. I love you too, Victor. I'm going to do my best to help you any way I can. After that, I hear him walk off. I s the sound uh, of his padded feet walking down the halls fades away, and with each step, it inquires I feel more and more cold. I can even hear him pass the guard on the way out of the corridor, but I can't make out what he says. The air and the weather began to take over as I began to feel weak. The sun is already beginning to set, and the temperature is dropping fast. I walk over to the bench and lay down on it, using the blanket as a sort of cushion. Small pains work their way throughout, throughout my body and under my head, keeping me from worrying about how chilly it is down here. I probably should have asked Leal if he could get someone to send Leaf down here. He probably doesn't want to see me right now, but I'm definitely in need of some medicine. Something to ease the pain, at least until I figure out what's going on. I just hope that it's not anything lethal or anything with lasting effects. When did this even start? Only a few weeks ago, I think. To think that only a little over a month ago I was back in Erin. My room was so comfortable and I had my own tower in the castle which overlooked the entire capital in the ocean beyond. I would watch the sunset over the horizon every evening while drinking the finest wine. 
The sun's golden light will bounce off the tops of the roofs and cast a yellow glow on the, onto the misty air above. It was a pampered life much better than that of my childhood, but I wasn't very happy. I placed my hand on the pillow and closed my eyes, trying to think of something other than my situation and the pain my body feels. Back then, every day was the same. I would work for hours every day and then what? Sometimes I would just sit in my room reading a book. Other times I would visit the local brothel and try to have a night for a pleasure. Those nights were only for temporary joy though. Those men only took pleasure in my company because they were paid to. And at the end of the night, I was left feeling empty. It was only a little over a year ago and I was naive. I still am. Despite what happened, I can't help but think being seen here was the best thing to happen to me. For the past month, life has felt like it's worth living. On the road here, I reminiscent on the stories I read and songs I heard on the lands beyond Erin. It made things seem exciting and simple. The songs lie, though. They tend to always do that. There's one thing that I can be correct in my judgment on, however. I met a gallant knight who loves me for who I am, someone who doesn't want anything from me. All he wants is me, and I love him. I can't fully rely on him to solve this predicament I'm in as much as I wish I could. I'll need to be able to find my own way out of the situation when the time comes. I need to play this smart. I lay here for what feels like a few more minutes with my mind jumping between thoughts. The pain in my head isn't going away either as the time passes faster and faster. In fact, it's getting worse. Having my eyes closed at this point just hurts, so I open them. The sun has set over the mountains, its rays shining into the sky above or just barely visible. It was already high among the stars, and I watched as small flowers of snow drifts in through the window. Moonlight reflects through the snow, made each piece sparkle and glitter like stars. They land in a puddle on the ground and melt into the rest of the muddy water. For some reason, this vision fills me with a sense of sadness. I consider covering up the barred window with a blanket to allow for better sleep tonight, but I don't have anything to hang it up with. I don't even have the desire to sleep anyway. The last thing I need is to slowly lose my sanity in the cell after having more nightmares. Ugh. <sighs> Another sharp pain surges through my body like lightning, causing me to sit up. A distorted violence image, a distorted violent image flashes across my vision. My heart is face is racing, and despite the cold, I can feel myself sweating. There it is again. Standing up after another bowl of pain causes me to panic. Something must be terribly wrong. I have to call for help. There should be a guard. This I have to call for help. There should be a guard to end the hop. Am my father getting through? Great heavens above. That took years. I stopped about trash and my eyes widened. At first I think that someone's outside my cell talking to me, but hello? Nobody's there. The voice sounded as if it was echoing in my head. My voice finishes tensing up and I feel a chill run down my spine. Am I dreaming? No, this isn't a dream. There's just something about it that feels different. It feels strange. Another horrible sigh of pain slithers throughout my nerves, this time causing me to collapse onto the bench, similar to last night. My vision is slowly fading, but so does everything else. The sound of wind. The smell of the musty cell. All my senses have been set down. Am I dying? Am I dead? No. I'm entirely sure that if I was dead, either something or nothing would have happened by now. Right now, I'm just floating. If this was an afterlife being trapped alone with my thoughts, would surely send me over the edge. I must be dreaming again. But nothing's happening. For the weakest moment, I feel 
and think nothing. It's pure bliss. Suddenly my vision is flooded with white colors. A vortex spirals ahead of me, spinning rapidly and constantly changing. There are colors that I have never seen before. Wind blows in my face, it causes my clothes and hair to flow behind me in a chaotic fashion. What the hell is going on? Usually my dreams are this crazy. I look down at the ground and realize there are isn't any. It's causing me to fall to my knees and stop. Whatever I'm standing on seems like a thin sea of glass, but it's too perfect to be anything like that. It's a smooth as silk and seems to run like water. A simmering mist flies out from behind me when my legs touch the ground. It's not like how silk leaves a, leaves a wake as it cuts through water. My hands press into the glass firmly, and it feels cold. It's not painful. It's not painful though, and no matter how hard I press my hands into it, they don't sink beneath the surface. I just hear this is a good thing though, because on the other side is a chasm of spiraling colors. I slowly get up to stand on my feet. The wind is howling in my ears, and there's a bright light up ahead, so bright that it hurts to look at. Along with the sound of the wind is echoing voices and noises. Some sounds that are familiar, others that I've never even heard before. Bright embers that resemble stars float down from above and fly behind me at high speed. Look behind me and it's the same as in front. The endless chasm of tents and tones spinning like a whirlpool. So this one down my back caused me to physically sever. It's beautiful yet terrifying. Nobody's here from what I can tell. It doesn't stop me from calling out though. Hello? My voice echoes down the tunnel, repeating everything back to me as if mocking me. Is anybody there? Again, nothing but my own voice answering back with the same phrase. Mr. Mockery, there's another voice. You seem awfully calm. You usually most spend their first few moment, moments either throwing up or sailing into the void with terror. It's that voice again. Where are you? Over here. I turn the face forward and I have to strain my neck to look up. Before me stands a creature of large size, shrouded in bright, iridescent flames. I alone will have to stand on Leo's shoulders in order to be at eye level with, eye level with him. Their fur is also suited in a in a unnatural a natural dark shadow, completely unaffected by the blaze of flames behind them. Each tough signs and reflects in the light like a perfectly polished piece of flint. With tills with sparks flying th flying off. It's a mesmerizing and terrifying sight. I sense a powerful energy coming off of him. His arms come out from their upper torso, each one looking different from the, from the last. Not only that, but there's also two tails. Their tail eyes pierce into my soul. They have a soft look to them. The last thing I notice is a silvery green crest running across their pectoral, along with a glowing crest of tequin on their belly. This part never changes though. Are you done staring? Their voice is masculine and strong, but has a mellow tone to it. Not as threatening as their physical appearance. I. You'll have to forgive me. I'm finding it very hard not to. One of their sets of arms cross and the other set places their paws firmly on their hips. They're not the first, all is forgiven. The sparks from the flames on their back fly by my face, but if any are landing on, my, on me, 
They certainly don't hurt. Am I dreaming? This is dreadfully long pause before they answer. It's it's complicated, but no. This isn't a dream, Richter. You know me? Of course. I know a lot of things. Most of it is useless, but it has its moments. They talk a lot. I was like a child talking to an adult in a very fast manner. And why? Did? This time they answered immediately. No, you're not dead. Then what's going on? The wind around us was as fast as changing current in an unpredictable way. The sound is loud but not oppressive. Simmering dust flies out from, from under their padded feet and blows past me like a sandstorm. Richard, I'm going to explain this in a way that is easy to understand, but it will be shocking. I'm somehow, I somehow doubt you'll have too much trouble understanding this, though. Understanding what? That you are a very gifted person. What are they talking about? No, oh no. Nah. What gift could I possibly have? Yes, you are. You might even consider it a curse. That depends how you use it. Use what? They take a moment to answer across that set of their arms. Have you ever had dreams that seem well? Experiences that are not your own. The whole upper paw. Has there ever been a moment where you've been attacked by terrible headaches and sore pains? Yes, once or twice, but... I see the ones up my body and the legs have been... Kneeling on begin to feel weak. Those are just nightmares, coincidences. They point at me. Is that truly what you believe? Or is that just what you what you want to believe? This question sits in my ears and blots out the noise of everything else around me. They're right. These aren't just coincidences and deep down I've always known that. What's going on? You have an ability. I mean, I consider yourself a special person. We have a very special ability, and I'm here to guide you through controlling it. You're going to tell me what this is? Since your birth, you have had the ability to see beyond the present. Those dreams you had were visions, Richter. Visions of the past from others' perspective. What? That's not possible. It's. How could that even work? I think back to the horrible nightmare I had about Raynor. What's that? You've had this ability your whole life. Over time has weakened. The potential for this power becomes weaker with each person who inherits it. In span of time that a mortal has been able to inherit, it has increased to just above 100 years. Most of your race has likely forgotten about these individuals. Not only just now having you're only just now having clear visits, but you're not able to control them. That's why I am here. My head feels like, and the feeling in my heat and my feet is completely gone. Who are you? You don't know who I am yet. This was expected. To your people, I was known and named for many things. The Creator, the Supreme Being, have even been referred to as a demon. On more than one occasion, I am simply the one who built upon the foundation of this world, the one who guides everything, yet has no control. Tigran. A short pause falls after my outburst before he responds. What? The wind begins to slow down, becoming a light breeze, and the clothes around us slow down, like a wheel on a car. You're Tigran, aren't you? The God that created our world? The one who our continent is named after? The wreck of dust flying out beneath us is now a gentle cloud of sand. It's relieving to not have the sound wind in my ear anymore, but now this area feels empty. Yes, I'm Tigran. And the God of your world, but here I am just a guide. 
you hold almost as much power here as I do. And this form you've taken is a trick. A trick of the light. Before me now stands a tiger, vibrant and strong, with glowing green eyes. They're not just a tiger though. Their form is made up of three different animals from what I can tell. The second animal is some sort of reptile. It's like it looks like a snake from the tail, but but it could be wrong. The last animal is a bird. Lord's winged hands that are as yellow as honey sprout from beneath their other sets of arms. They are completely naked, they have no reproductive organs. How do you know I was your god? Most don't figure it out that fast, especially not the non religious ones. I haven't been to a place of worship in years, but I remember your form being that of a chimera. I also recognize the symbol here on your torso. I say this lightly, pointing to the triangle on their belly. Interesting. I thought you were I thought you weren't able to keep an a level hair in dire situations. He chuckles on himself, his belt booming throughout the cavern. It just came to me, I suppose. Now, if it's okay, I'd like to take up more of your time by asking some more questions. Time doesn't pass here. Well, for me, it doesn't, but if you come here unconscious, then well. So I am asleep. Is this the heavens afterlife? They say their head. No. The afterlife is a completely different ordeal. Something I won't explain to you. It will end up being a burden. I raise a hand. This is your mind's eye. The place where you can transcend time and body. They just around with their arms. It's your sanctuary. My sanctuary? Why is it so calm now? It is yours. It will react to your emotions and your thoughts. I study the way the walls of this tunnel move slowly. Almost as if they are barely moving at all. I never see it get so calm this fast. When I go to the one of the curved walls of the chasm, one of my fingers along the side. They cut into the wall and on the other side is more layers of light. This flies off of my hand, similar to the floor. I've had a lot of stress about lately. I'm all out of room in my mind to fret about this, especially since I still don't know what this means for me yet. They put on a quizzical expression. What this means for you. I know you're doing your best to explain this, but it's a lot to take in. Along with that, my mind tends to wonder a lot. That's okay. This isn't something that you could well comprehend in a day. Not only that, but I'm a bit restricted. Restricted? They raise their hands to their chest and one a finger along their glowing scar. A punishment from the higher gods. Tegan's scar. I remember that the mountain range northwestern northwestern Aaron was named for religious reasons, but I didn't think it was that important. Yes. It stops me from giving away too much information to mortals. Past events cause great chaos and left me punished. So you can share your wisdom with me, but not direct knowledge they found. Yes. The collective knowledge of this world is something you will have to attain yourself. It is not something I can give you. On the collective knowledge of the world, that could make itself someone extremely powerful. But something feels off. There must be a catch. Earlier, earlier you said this was a curse. Something that could help me, that could either help or burden me. The eyes watching, I could see they've been eager to have this brought up. Yeah, I did. 
This ability is extremely powerful. The higher gods sometimes question me for bestowing it. They tell Swiss that he squares their chain for a tiger paw. But the world needs someone to act as their guide. Guide them toward a brighter future by making sure the mistakes of the past are not repeated. Its power should only be used for the greater good. Any avatar who uses it for selfless intentions is punished, and the cycle grows weaker. The breeze around me sends a chill up my spine as they say this. So I ask you this question. So I ask this one question. Ask it of everyone. Everything around me slows, even the mess beneath the, my feet. If you couldn't see any event from the past, and any, any event from the future, what would they be? And answer truthfully, I don't know if you're lying. I look down at the ground and attempt to think about this question hard. This is always so much fun. I guess I'll start with the first. If I could see any event from the past, what would it be? To be honest, the first thing that comes to mind is what I've been questioning for the past day. You could wait now. Is that self aside? No, I don't think it is. I want justice for our king. This isn't just to save myself. This isn't about me. But what would I do if I could see the future? T. Grin didn't mention being able to see the future. Being is a trick question. I waited to answer. Good. Go on. If I could see anything in the past, I would want to see who murdered our king. Not for the safety of myself, but for the justice of his kingdom. Interesting answer. And about the future, I guess my thoughts will continue. The future is more difficult. The possibilities are endless, and there is no event that is set in stone. In a theoretical sense, I suppose I would wish to see a tragic event before it happens so I could so that I could prevent it. Tigran bites their lower lip with curiosity before responding. That's a unique response. It isn't the first time I've heard that heard it though. It's that bad. Thank you for answering my question. It proved me with great insight. The first time I've heard it, though, I step back. Thank you for answering my question. It provided me with great insight. So it's true then. It's up with the trash who let down me. Can really see the past? Is it really possible for me to, t to figure out who killed my king? They brought their chin with one of their hands, look at me with a concerned gaze. Yes, it is possible, but you will need to train. Right now your experience only allows you to see distant memories, and this has only happened because of certain triggers. Hearing them say this reminds me of how I had the visit of Alina's death right after hearing about it. That happened 10 years ago. Anything recent would be harder to grasp. A twisted memory of the past. A sigh. The past buff, you've been becoming your own person more and more. No longer are you an onlooker or passerby. You finally remove your mask. Okay. We will speak again. How? I have a feeling you already know. With that, their figure slowly fades away. The light behind them reflecting through their body like glass. At first I'm lost, not knowing what to do next, but then I feel an empty pain in my stomach. I can feel my eyes physically gleam with light as everything around me closes. I hear one last thing before I'm enveloped in covered in darkness. Your eyes can see beyond the horizon. 
beyond the skyline. Use this. I'm back in the cell. My head is leaning up against the wall and my body is spiraled out on the stone bench. My body feels completely exhausted but not in a sleepy way. Was I dreaming? I lift myself up slightly and look out the window. The sun's rays are still being cast over the mountain like a golden crown, trying to impass. Even if I only slept a wink, the light from the sun shouldn't be visible at all. So it was real. Other than that, am I, am I crazy? Can we really see into the past? It would make sense considering everything that's happened, that vision that I had when I was looking through Raynor's eyes. It was too real. Does this mean I could do it again? See back in time figure out who killed him? I can't see how it would help me though. Not like anyone would believe me. I took the ring off of my finger and fiddled with it in my hands. Sliding it on and off, watching it gleam in the moonlight. Focusing on objects helps me think. I see another object gleam in the light. A similar object stuck in one of the piles of straw. It's like being hidden. Running over to it, I reach in and pull out a small sword of glass. There was a piece of, of a mirror about as big as a spearhead. Maybe someone was going to use it as a weapon. I lift it up to my face and try to look into it to see a reflection. The sword scratched to hell, and there's not a very clear image. My face is slightly warped in the reflection, but I can make out everything. My hair is a bit disheveled, and I look like I haven't slept in two days. Something does strike me as odd. I swear my eyes were green. Now that I get a closer look, they're blue. Extremely bright and vibrant blue. Almost like diamonds. They were green before, I swear they were. Suddenly, I think back to what Tigran said a few minutes ago. You finally remove your mask. Maybe there's a correlation to my eyes changing color in those visions. A side effect of some sort. I place the mirror sword deeper into the straw pile as I got from it, making sure nobody would be able to see it. I still got the ring in my hand and walked back over to the bench, sitting down on it with my back to the window. I feel stuck. Like everything that's happened so far has led me here, and now I can't do anything. My only hope is to try to see the past. I've done it before, and know I have. This is a trick and I need to start believing. Even if nobody believes me, I can try to figure out evidence. Proof that can be used against the killer. Even so, I have, I can have some solace in knowing who the killer is before I'm executed. A tremor suits up my body as I think about being watched at the chopping block. That won't happen. I'll find a way. And I'll have Leo to help me along the way. Live by one's wits. Who's that? At first it sounded like it sounds like Tigran is speaking to me, but it don't sound like that. The, the voice is muffled and twisted. It's just someone were to grab the words and wing it and wing them out like a wag. And yet they feel similar. Like I've heard them before. Live by one's wits. Advice maybe? Another past memory sent the torch of my mind with riddles is more likely. Makes me almost wish I didn't have the skill. I shake my head slightly and focus on the wing again. I need to play it smart. Can't go around acting like a fool anymore. This is the forest and I'm the fox being burned out of its den. My only hope is to find another way to tunnel out. And I'm going to need help from those I trust.
over here. So we've been hearing that voice already, even before he had this experience already. Trust by one's wits. I guess that means to trust by your intuition or trust by what your mind or heart says. I guess. I guess what it means, what it meant to tell Winter is he trusts what you believe is right. I think that's what it's trying to tell Victor. So we got to meet Tigran, who is the god of the who is the god that the people of the continent worship and believe in. He's kinda of like a chimera, I mean he predominantly looks like a tiger, but he also has reptilian features as well as I think some features like a bird has. And you have to train him how to see into the recent past. Because right now, Winter can only see events from the distant past. Like when he was in Reynolds' perspective, yes, he saw Queen Elena getting murdered by the bandits. That was 10 years ago. So, Tigran is going to train Victor on how to see the more recent events. Hopefully, after training, if Victor is successful, he'll be able to see who killed, who, who killed King Raynor. Now, even if he does Succeed in figuring out who killed King Raynor. It's not like he can use it for evidence. He's going to need some physical evidence to prove that that person who killed Raynor actually did it. Simply seeing a vision of the murderer is not going to prove. His innocence, his innocence because nobody else can see it. Nobody else can see what he's seeing. So even if he does manage to to see it to the recent past, that's still not going to be enough to prove others that you're innocent. It only proves to you to you that you're innocent and that you'll be framed, but it doesn't prove the others the same. So I wonder if Leah will be able to figure that out on his own. You know, Winter, he manages to figure out for himself who killed the king, but it's Liao who figures out the physical aspect of it, you know, who physically did it, like physical evidence as to who the killer is. Or maybe Winter can tell Liao who killed the person Maybe he, maybe um, maybe Winter can figure out who killed Raynor, then tell Liao about it, and then Liao can try to see if there's any evidence of that person that Winter said killed the king actually did it. You know, like Winter finds out this person kills Raynor, and then he tells Liao about it. He'll try to to spy on that person. And see if there's any evidence that that person that Winter claims killed the king actually did it. You know, 
we are figuring out the physical part of the of what we just saw. So we will be seeing more Tigran throughout the story. So we're about to start chapter eight next time and we'll be seeing more Leal. I think it would be from Leal's perspective. So that's all I have to say for now. Thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye.